Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with part two of my epic Sands of Time After Effects tutorial. Now, if you followed the instructions in part one, you'll have something that looks a little bit like this, a realistic text engraved into stone effect. Um, in part two, I'll be showing you how to create the second element, which is the sandstorm drift reveal that you saw in the original demo. Um, so let's get started. First step, as always, create a new composition. We'll call this sand drift. Make sure it's the same properties as your existing project, so in my case 1024 by 576, 25 frames a second, and 10 seconds long. Hit OK. Right click, select New and Solid, and we'll create a new solid, and we'll simply call it Sand. Now you can make it any color you like, because we'll actually be changing the color later on, but let's just make it a sandy color to start off with. In the Effects and Presets panel, type 4 color to find your 4 color gradient. Drag that onto the Sand layer and start selecting the colors that you want to use for your sand. Once you're happy with the end result, scroll out to give yourself a little bit of room. Now we're going to create an animated mask on this layer to simulate the passage of sand from the top left to the bottom right. So it'll look something like this. Use the Bezier tool to create some nice peaks and troughs in the sand, the point in the direction you want the sand to travel. And it should look something like that. Select your sand layer and hit M. Check the stopwatch for the mask path at the beginning of the timeline. And we're going to move to about five seconds in, and that's going to be our stop frame for the animation. So now we have two keyframes on the timeline, a beginning and an end point. With the mask selected and the timeline indicator at the beginning of the timeline, just edit the key points on the mask to make sure that all of the peaks and troughs are off screen. Then move to your end keyframe and reverse the process. So just drag all of your mask points so that they're off frame. Now remember they all need to go in the same direction as the direction of the sand. So top left to bottom right. And what you'll end up with is this. Twill down the mask properties and we'll just feather it off by about 30 pixels just to give us that nice soft edge on the sand. Create another new composition, same properties as your previous one, and we'll call this one Sand Storm. Hit OK, create a new solid, and we'll call this Fractal Noise. Doesn't really matter what color it is. In the effects panel type fractal, find your fractal noise effect, drag that onto the new layer, select subscale in the uh, fractal type, leave the rest at default except for contrast which will ramp up to about 150. Make sure the timeline indicator is at the beginning of the timeline, twirl down transform, hit the stopwatch next to offset turbulence to create a keyframe, and you'll find there's a anchor point in the middle of the screen. Now we want to drag this towards the top left hand corner of the screen and that's our start keyframe. Move the timeline indicator to the five second point and just drag that anchor point down to the bottom right hand corner of the screen to create the end keyframe. And what you'll get is this drifting clouds effect moving from top left to bottom right. Now if you go back to your stone engraving um, composition, drag the sand drift underneath your fake light. Drag your sand storm to the bottom of the pile. Turn off the visibility because we don't actually need to see it. Go to your effects and presets panel and type displacement to find the displacement map effect. Drag that onto the sand drift 
and in the displacement map layer select your sandstorm. Now for both the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement we're going to use the luminance values and we're going to increase the value of the maximum horizontal and maximum vertical displacement to 30 pixels each. Not only does it give us this cloudy effect on the sand, it also breaks up the leading edge layer. What we don't want are these broken edges around the sand. So we'll just select the sand drift, hit S to bring up the scale properties and increase the scale values to about 110 or however much you need to just make those rough edges disappear. Okay, we're getting close, but uh, still a couple of things to do. I want to give this sand drift a sense of depth, and we do that by just adding a little bit of bevel and emboss. So right click, select bevel and emboss, twill down the settings, and just increase the soften to 16. And that'll give us this nice 3D sense. Our next step is to go to our effects and presets panel and type noise and just find the noise effect, drag that down onto your sand drift. Select 10% as the amount of noise and uncheck the use color noise. And that gives us this uh, grainy look which makes it look a little bit like sand. It's not very convincing but that doesn't really matter right now because we'll be adding another effect to it. Back to your effects panel and find the directional blur. Again drop that onto your sand drift layer Set the angle of direction to match your screen progression, so top left to bottom right, we're looking at about 122 to 130 degrees, and just type a blur length of 4. And as you can see what that does, it takes all those little noise particles and stretches them out in the direction of the wind and the travel across the screen. So I'll just render that out and I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so here's the rendered result. And as you can see, adding the noise and the directional blur has really given it that sense of sand being blown from the top left to the bottom right as the sand drift passes over the text. Now one thing I've noticed, um, in, in the first section of the tutorial, I set the fake light layer to overlay. Now that's, while that worked for the, uh, for the stone, it's making the, the colors in the sand dune just a little bit unrealistic. So I'm going to just change that. Right click on fake light, go to blending mode, and we'll probably pick soft light. That's much better. Okay, so that's the end of part two. Um, in part three, I'll be showing you how to create the uh, text to sand component. Thanks for watching.